I'm Cliff Lenz. In this program, we're going to take a look at a lot of different instruments that have something in common. They all have keyboards. A keyboard is really just a convenient way to set something in motion, or you can send an electronic signal with a keyboard. With 10 fingers, you can control dozens of operations and move very quickly. This model will show us what happens inside a grand piano when a key is pushed. Pretend that this rod is one of the strings inside the piano. When I press on the key, the felt hammer hits the string and pulls away. The string vibrates and sounds. Then when I lift my finger, this part, called a damper, comes down and stops the vibration. That's a lot of levers, buttons, screws, brackets, rods, wires, and wood all set in motion by the flick of a finger. If you learn how to play the piano, you can make all kinds of wonderful music. A piano is almost like a one-person orchestra. A person has to practice a lot in order to get a piano to sound like that. If you really want to appreciate what a keyboard can do, think about the limited number of notes that a person can play at one time on a string instrument, like a guitar. And consider also that an instrument like a piano is big enough for two. Four pianists get together at two pianos. A lot more notes can be played.
The piano is traditionally part of a small jazz ensemble. The performer not only fills in harmonies, but also has a chance to be creative while improvising, that is, making up music on the spot. The piano is the most popular instrument in the United States, and there's more music written for it than there is for any other instrument. Ancestors of the piano produced their own distinct sounds by using different mechanisms to make the strings inside vibrate. My young friend, Sarah Chen, went to visit a musician who plays many of these early keyboard instruments. Let's hear what Sarah heard in Virginia Moore's studio. A whole bunch of keyboard instruments. The harpsichord, which is still played today, was popular over 200 years ago. Pressing the keys causes the strings inside to be plucked. The clavichord, which was popular at the same time as the harpsichord, produces sound when metal blades strike the strings. Small wooden hammers, covered with leather, hit the strings inside this early piano, called a forte piano. And this is the acoustic piano sound you're accustomed to hearing. The strings are still hit by hammers, but they're made of felt. Well, those were some keyboard sounds from the past. Here's a piece of 20th century piano music that I think you'll find interesting. It was written by the American composer John Cage. Now, he wanted to use a whole orchestra of percussion instruments for a performance, but didn't have enough space on the stage. So he decided to put objects between various piano strings to get the different sounds that he wanted. In this particular piece, he suggested the use of screws, bolts, and strips of rubber. The piano music tells the performer where these objects should be placed. The piano is now called a prepared piano. Pianos are not the only instruments operated by a keyboard. The pipe organ is a keyboard instrument with an ancient history. 
You may have seen one in a church. It differs from the piano because the sound is produced by air going through pipes rather than strings vibrating. An organ can have one or more keyboards and a set of pedals played by the feet. When an organist presses a key, an opening is created which allows air to be driven through a particular pipe or pipes. This creates the sound. This is an electronic organ, and it doesn't need air at all to produce its sounds. The sound is produced by electronic tone generators. Many electronic organs, like this one, can produce special effects like percussion patterns, guitar, or piano sound. The sounds of this piano are also produced electronically. It can do many of the same things that an acoustic piano can, and it never needs to be tuned. People who play popular music like it because it's portable and because it can imitate other instruments. In the 1950s, an electronic instrument was developed that changed the way people composed, performed, and listened to music. It's had an especially strong impact on the popular music field. That instrument is the synthesizer, an electronic marvel capable of imitating any musical instrument. It can also bend pitches, create unusual sounds, trill, screech, transpose, and create just about any kind of sound that the human mind can imagine. And how was this all controlled? Usually, by keyboards. Don Muro is a concert synthesis. That is, he performs all kinds of music in concert on one or more synthesizers. Because Don is also an organist, he's able to play two synthesizers with his hands and a third one with his feet.
An electronic instrument can do all kinds of wonderful things, providing a human being tells it what to do. Keyboard instruments can be difficult to master because the player must have nimble fingers, good coordination, and be able to read lots of notes at the same time. But thousands and thousands of people practice day after day because the pleasure of being able to play a keyboard instrument is so great.